Hello, this is Marcus from CyberDog. Today you're looking at the iPhone 5 backlight repair video. So in this video, um, it's going to demonstrate how you to remove an iPhone 5 backlight oil, backlight IC, and three backlight filter for iPhone 5. So first, um, you put some no clean gel flux on either side of the this is the iPhone backlight coil for iPhone 5. So you put some gel flux on either side of the connections. Then you turn your soldering iron with the appropriate size of the tip to roughly 300 to 350 degrees Celsius. You can go up a little bit higher as well. I could go up as high as 400 degrees Celsius as long as the tip itself is not actually 400 degrees Celsius. Basically, you want to melt the left free solder that's initially on the coil, on this larger board, which will melt at around 230 degrees Celsius. So anything above that will be fine. 300 will be ideal. So what I have on my soldering iron in this video is that uh, some of the low temperature cyber dock um, SMD alloy. It's for it's designed for desoldering. This alloy uh, melts at much lower temperature. So when you mix the lower melting solder alloy with uh, the initial larger board alloy, you can the solder once you mix it, it can become easier to remove. And the reason you want to do this is because you don't want to continuously heat up the logic board on both sides of the solder connections for too long it can damage the neighboring components so that was a drop of the you see how, how mellow and liquidy like this alloy is because it has a much lower melting temperature In order for this to work, your soldering iron actually have to melt. Um, it has to maintain the heat to at least 250 degrees in order to melt the original solder. Once that's mixed, then the combined melting temperature will be much lower. Actually closer to less than 100 degrees Celsius once it's combined. So I've done that on one side, then I'm doing the other side. It's okay if you get some of this solder onto the component. Well, you don't want to do it on purpose and get it into the neighboring component, but if you did it accidentally, it's okay. Um, you can always clean them afterwards. Uh, fast thing forward, because the surface area of the solder that's, um, that's down on the larger board on this coil is quite large, the soldering iron I use had a difficult time to assess the angle enough uh, to create enough heat to the original solder. So that's why now uh, in the video you see I'm putting on Kapton tape. Kapton tape is designed to withstand 265, 68 degrees Celsius without actually getting deformed and melting. It's a special type of polymer. Um, it, it serves as a heat sink, heat sink. It's almost as a shield protecting whatever the components tape underneath. You can always also use aluminum tape for this, but I just happen to have Kapton tape. Um, that's why it was used. Also, kept on tape, you are able to see what's going on and happening underneath the tape because it's just loosened.
So the reason I'm putting the Captain Tail around the backlight coil is because I'm going to blast it with heat gun. Don't really need to do this step, but I just figured for the tutorial this it's a it's a better, more protective way for you to remove components. Again, you want to um, always supply ample amount of good good quality flux to the area you're working on. So what you see now, the metal part, it's the nozzle from the heat gun. Since on the both side, I already have the low melting cyberdog alloy, SMB rework kit. Um, the heat gun doesn't, it's very difficult for you to actually damage the component when you do this. Um, I always said it doesn't really matter on how high your heat gun is at, as long as you control the bore temperature. So setting it at 350 to 400 degrees or even 450 degrees for your heat gun is fine. Because what's going to happen on, on board, the temperature is not actually at 400, it's only the heat gun core is 400. Also, before you do this, it will be a good idea to preheat the board to 100 degrees Celsius if you have a preheater. I did not use a preheater in this repair, but that will really help for the um, speeding out the repair process. You can also preheat the board the way I'm doing in the video right now, just heating it, letting it go, heating it, letting it go. That will heat up the board too. Again, you always want to supply the flux. Once the flux is dry, you are running dangerously at a higher temperature than you wanted for the solder to flow. Then get to the getting to the range of damaging the components. Flux serves almost as a temperature buffer to absorb the excess kinetic energy from the heat gun. Hence, the temperature will only rest as high as the flux vaporization point. And if this particular flux vaporization point is just a few degrees above the left freeze of melting solder. So um, it will vaporize at 270 degrees Celsius. Okay, going back using the soldering iron. So the heat gun method was proven too slow. Um, forward because the heat gun station I was using, the temperature wasn't high enough to remove this part. So this is a similar method using the soldering iron on both sides. And as you can see, the coil comes off quite easily. If you put, supply enough heat, as uh, you see this padding, um, it has a pretty large surface area underneath. That's why there was, a, and the coil is pretty thick, so there was some difficulty using um, the heat gun earlier for deeper penetration of the heat. Soldering iron will probably work better if you don't have a preheater. However, if you do have a preheater and uh, and an infrared station that will also work. So I'm putting in the video right now. I'm putting back one of the capacitor that flew off um, earlier in the repair. So if you do damage any components, neighboring components, for example, like they fly off on the board or whatever, anything, um, or they're just being moved, you can always put them back where you find them as long as they're not internally damaged.
Remember the reason they fly out for the ball in the first place is because the uh, low temperature cyberduck solder um, it got some of it, the residue got onto the other components. It makes it extremely easy to melt and extremely easy to come off the board. So in doing so, right now I'm blasting the board with very low heat actually. It's not gonna damage any other components. As you can see, every other component is rigid except the part that I'm touching. That's because it has the um, SMD rework solder on it. And there was a piece of residue of plastic. You see the black part that Tweezer was pointing at? That was from the coil. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of got stuck on the board. It's not part of the board. To clean it, you can, if you do burn the plastic on the coil and then somehow it got sticky onto the board, you can just to leave it alone or you can clean it off of the tweezer gently and carefully. Now, in the video, I'm removing an excess residue of the alloy. It's currently on a spot with the, um, the really is just a grounding spot with the heat sink shell it's being connected to. Okay, so the coil, as you can see from the picture now, it's being removed. And moving on to the backlight IC, you want to again you want to get some of the uh, CyberDock SMD re rework desoldering alloy. There's two type. One is leaded, which is the one I'm using. Uh, in my in my opinion, the leaded one works better. The other type is lead free. It melts at a slightly higher temperature. Instead of being 58 degrees Celsius, it melts at uh, 70 around 70 degrees Celsius, and that's the lead free one. You can choose either one, it really doesn't really matter, but I just personally prefer the leather one, um, as they are cheaper. So the technique is pretty much the same thing. You put a little bit of uh, desoldering alloy on one side, and you put a little bit of cyberdot desoldering alloy on the other side. And you heat it out the component. Since this component is relatively small, it should be easier to remove. This is the backlight IC for iPhone 5. Just so need a heat on one side and heat on the other side. And as you can see, the IC was removed of my soldering iron earlier. Okay, so this is a, a backlight coil for iPhone 5. You can purchase the coil from through the link below, cyber.lc.com from our web store for iPhone 5 backlight. So these coils are new and I'm gonna be installing them momentarily. So I decided in this repair to install the Backlight IC first, simply because due to its location and size, it's easier to install. Well, it's not easier to install, it's actually more difficult to install due to its location and size. And that's probably why I choose to do it first. Because if you put a coil in, it will obstruct the view, uh, the field of view where you're doing the repair for the IC. And it will also act like the giant heat sink next to it to prevent heat transfer. It doesn't really matter to be honest, like either one you want to do first, but it's just easier to orient orientate the backlight IC. Oh by the way, this IC has priority. So you want to align the line to be the correct orientation. As you can see in the video. So 
basically what I'm trying to say is uh, it has a direct it's di this IC chip is directional. It has a direction. You cannot insert one way over the other. It has a proper direction where it's pointing at. And to help you orientate orientate yourself, there is an arrow. There are lines on the chip that will point to. You want to match the lines to the right direction. It wouldn't work the other way around. The coil, however, is bidirectional. You can install it whichever direction as long as it fits on the board. But not the IC. And you want to use a very fine, fine tipped um, tweezer. Ideally, you want to use two of them. In this video, I used the pick instead of a tweezer. I don't know, I, I like the twig, like the pick better. Um, but it doesn't really matter. If you have a very fine tweezer, then it will work just the same. When you first buy the tweezer, the tip is very fine and pointy until you damage it and which is all I did in my tweezer because you sometimes drop it or whatever reason you get bent and then you just fire it down back to its uh, final tip again the orientation of the orientation of this chip is very important Also careful when you uh, use the flock, as you can see that I have trouble figuring out where which direction this chip is at right now due to the flux. It's uh, washing and erasing the drawing on it. So I'm guessing at this stage I'm deciphering which direction the IC is pointing. Okay. So you see, you see that in the picture? There's a marking on the chip. You want to point the white line to the other side of the coil. So you want to point the white line to the other direction from the backlight coil. And that will be the direction for the IC. And the one good thing about the tacky sticky flux that you use instead of being liquid, it's uh, it's more sticky. So when you put place the components onto the board, it stays on the board due to its uh, disgusted stickiness. Okay, so you place the components onto the board, and then you just gently heat up the board to about two hundred degrees Celsius will do it because um, the solder you have solder residue make sure you have on the board is really cyber dark SMD soldering alloy and that alloy it melts at much lower temperature hence you don't need a lot of temperature to solder stuff on. Soldering things on is really the easy part. Taking stuff off that's the difficult part of this repair especially with the backlight coil since it's so big. Um, I really recommend you to use a preheater to or at least heat out the board. So yeah, but putting stuff on it's, it's really fun. It's really easy actually. Just just heat it up. Don't make things burn. Heat up to two hundred degrees Celsius as long as you use the correct soldering um, alloy. And just move the component around. You want to get a little bit of um, shear stress onto the joints, so the bond forms better and. It, you want a good connection between the solder and the metal connection, the copper connections on the components. That's it. This is pretty much down soldering. I'm just messing with it too. Um, in the in the video, I'm just moving things around to get the joints perfect. I don't want any cracked solders. 
for this data. And the reason I can move the other two components because they also have the cypherdoc alloy on. The other components are rigid. Any other component, I should say. As the heat is really not that high, it's really only 200 degrees Celsius. Probably less. You don't really need 200 degrees to solve this, but 200 helps. Okay, then that concludes the repair of the iPhone 5 backlight coil and iPhone 5 backlight IC. You're not done with the repair yet. There's also three really teeny small um, backlight filters on iPhone 5. Instead of being traditionally two, uh, um, all the iPhone, iPhone models, iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, iPhone 3GS, um, iPhone 5 is the first iPhone that has uh, three backlight filters. I'm not sure why. Two of the filter has pretty much the same function. Um, I guess one, two of them are both going in, so it supplies ample amount of power to the, um, the, LCD, the LED screen. But if you take one out, it will ha only have the screen light. So I guess the reason they have two is because um, you have three. One's for ground, two, one goes to top of the screen, the other one goes to the bottom of the screen of the LED light. There's two LED light on iPhone 5 screen, by the way, due to its uh, longitudinal size. Okay, so now you're just looking at, uh, we're gonna move to the filter points. And before you do that, always, even if you use no clean flux, always clean your flux off the board. Um, what no clean flux means, it simply means that it has low residue. Uh, it doesn't really mean you can't, you don't have to clean it. It's always good practice to clean it. It's a technical term, no clean. It's not a literal term. It just means low residue flux. Instead of being like chunks of solid leftover, you get liquids. Oh. Yeah. And also, it means it's not, um, it's electronic safe. It's relatively non corrosive. So, if you, live on, you do live on the board, um, trace amount of it, it's not going to do any damage. Then that's why no clean means. Okay, so now you want to locate the three backlight filter. Um, you can go on, if you have difficulty seeing in this video, uh, at least at the moment, uh, go on to website cyberdocklc.com and you can find the detailed in large size of picture showing you the location of the uh, three backlight filter. Also, um, if you are also a member of our solution website, um, iPhone, well, iPhoneBacklight.com or WhitesOMTesla.com. Um, you can also get the same solution picture and many, many other more solution that's not available through our web store because we haven't um, gathered all the components for the solutions that other solution that's being made and also certain solutions and many, many solutions do not require component exchange, simply require um, understanding of the circuitry then those solutions are only exclusively available to the members of iPhone backlight community. You basically, you have to sign up to access it. Okay, so let's get started with the iPhone backlight filters. There's one, one over there. And again, desoldering it, it's very easy and very difficult if you don't use the CyberDock desoldering alloy. Because this component is so small, um, if you do it with a heat gun, chances are you're going to make everything else fly. If you're using a soldering iron, chances are you can rip off the pad because of the heat required to desolder it. So without actually um, heating up with um, 
the desoldering alloy, I really don't know if there's an easy way to do this. Unless you have a soldering tweezer, then that could make that could make things different. But now we've got to have a soldering tweezer. Even with soldering tweezer, you need to be careful not to rip the board off. So, for a small component like this, it's simple. You just put a huge chunk of, well, relatively thin, since it's so small. If you put a chunk of the alloy on top of the com component and put the soldering iron on parallel to the component and heat it up. Oh, again, always use flux. It makes your life so much easier. Without flux, you can't do any soldering. And also, careful where you buy the flux. You want good quality uh, flux. And don't buy stuff from China. Um, unless you found good quality flux from China. I haven't been able to. It doesn't, oh, also, I should note, um, it's not where you buy the flux, it's really what's inside the flux. You want no clean electronic grade flux. Not all no clean flux are electronic grade, meaning they have strong, strong inorganic acid in it. It can corrode the board. The flux I'm using, it's um, weak organic acid. It's very weak, so it's not corrosive. Okay, so this is, well, I removed the first filter, this is the second filter you want to remove. Again, you just tease it out, tease it out, heat it on one side, heat it on the other side with the alloy. Uh, iPhone 5, you really need to be careful of how, you heat, how you're removing the filter. Putting it back on is really easy, as you can see later. Um, getting it out, the reason it's difficult is because you have so many neighboring teeny components right next to it. You don't want to damage any other ones. And you also don't want to damage the soldering pad. So please get some of these um, alloy when you do this repair. Well, if you buy the entire kit from us, we usually include enough alloy for you, uh, CyberDuck desoldering alloy for you to do this repair, and then you make more, probably five times or 10 times the amount of quantity you need. So you should be good. If you don't have it, get it. Otherwise, I don't know how you do this repair. If you, fight, if you figure it out easy and safe way to do this without the alloy, let me know. So the downside of the alloy is that you have to be careful not to get this all over the board. But if you use a very small amount, you should be okay. And flux really helps. Otherwise, this will be all over the place. I don't really need to worry too much about this alloy being sticking permanently onto the neighboring components. As long as you don't actually heat up the neighboring joints, like here, um, it's not going to remove. And as as I was just talking, a dirt filter is being removed, as you, you see. Like, it was just removed of the solder bowl. So one, two, three, all three filters are removed in this picture. It's the location of one of the filter. I'm tinning the pad, making the pad ready for new filters to be put on. That's the location of the second filter. Tinning the pad. And a little above that is the location of the third filter. They're all the same size and same spats. Um, yeah, so you, you don't need to worry about mixing them up because they're all the identical three filters. You want to make sure the solder residue on it is nice and um, attached to the copper pad underneath, otherwise you're going to get some of the crack. So you see where this is going? I'm gonna place or well, clean it first, obviously. I wanna place uh, the filter onto three filters onto the proper location. And then just heat it up. 
Tuh yuk dong. I personally like to use a toothbrush to clean my boy, especially a sonic care toothbrush. So that's what you see in the screen. And to clean the boy, you just need a little bit of uh, um, isopropyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol if you have some available from uh, any laboratory really. Or rubbing alcohol, I suppose that will be fine. It's just an ethyl alcohol smells better. Okay, let's get started. Now the pads are cleaned and cleared. You can place the new backlight filter for iPhone 5. It's three of them. Placing filter number one. It just need to be. Uh, it doesn't need to be exact location. But it just need to be proximate, proximally attaching to the solder pad. The heat will do the rest. Oh yeah. Um, invest. Always invest on a very good, high quality microscope. The microscope you're seeing in this video is not as a very best quality of microscope I'm currently using. Using this is the older generation of microscope I was using. Um, it's not as good as making a picture. It was usable for soldering, but um, it just really can't compare with the newer microscope. Um, this video was made almost half a year ago. I just never get a chance to narrate it and upload it. So it was probably last year I made this video. Yeah, I've just been really busy. I didn't get a chance to upload most of my videos. Okay, so this is the second filter. Again, always use flux. It's better to use tacky flux in this one because otherwise it's not gonna stick. Or if you prefer liquid flux, you could use liquid flux too. Um, both flux is available on cypher.lc.com. Filter number two in place. So one more. Filter number three. Filter number three in place. Now the easy part, heating. Switching on your soldering uh, hot air gun, soldering station hot air, to 200 degrees Celsius at medium speed. And just heat it gently from above the top. Don't do it diag diagonally, because if you do that, the filter moves, as you can see. Now I have to read. Uh, reposition. Um, I'm doing in the video. I'm, I'm holding the higher gun in a slight angle, mostly because it's uh, otherwise it's gonna be superimposed with the microscope view, and so um, that's why I felt the move. Otherwise, you do this right perpendicularly on top of the board to avoid. Push uh, the air force to push away the filter on the logic board. Okay, that's pretty much done. Um, the rest of it is cosmetic, you want to make it pretty. All three filters are soldered in place. Oh, I guess one of them got loose, the neighboring components. This is why you need to be very careful when you unsolder these. And so then, um, but it's okay as long as you have the tacky flux uh, or any kind of flux 
and your air speed is down low, the component is not going to fly out too far. You can always put it back away from them. The one that fly off just happened to be a capacitor, which is fine. You can lose. There's like five of them, or three of them, as I can see. Um, you can lose those capacitors. They don't actually do anything. They, however, do mess you up if you have a blown capacitor. But if you have a missing capacitor, that's fine. Nothing will happen. Okay, so you're done. You're just making sure the capacitor is back in place, the filter is back in place. They look cosmetically appealing. They look okay. All right, I'm happy. Orderly as you like. And that's it, you're done. Um, in this video, so, so far I show you how to use the CyberDark desoldering alloy SMB rework it to unsolder iPhone 5 backlight coil, backlight IC, and backlight times 3 filters. Once you're done, let it cool off, drop a little bit of alcohol on top, and clean the board. Always clean off the flux you use. Especially next to a connector, you want those flux next to connectors. Now examine uh, with a pin, gently push not, not too hard, gently, onto the components to make sure they're not movable. They actually solder onto the board. And examine your board. Checking if the filter is, uh, the backlight IC is being soldered in place correctly or good. And solder joints are stable. Um, coils are good. Clean your board one more time. This is really for the camera, I don't really have to do this over and over. This is a tutorial after all. Okay, thank you very much for watching. This will conclude the repair for iPhone 5 backlight. Um, you don't have to do these in order. You can change the backlight filter first and then change the IC and change the coil. You don't have to do all three of them at the same time. You can change the filter first, see if it works. Change the coil then, see if it works, then change the IC, see if it works. If you want to save time, just do all three. Um, otherwise, if you one of them it's not completely failed, if half failed, it can short off the other one. Especially the coil. If it fell halfly, it can seriously damage the other two. By other two, I mean other four. Three filters and one IC. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I almost forgot. Um, if you're wondering where to get the backlight coil, this is the iPhone 5 backlight coil. You can get it from cyberdarkllc.com. This is the iPhone 5 backlight IC using the repair. You can get new ones from cyberdarkllc.com. These are the backlight filters for iPhone 5. 3 was used. You can get new ones on cyberdarkllc.com. They usually are sold in the kit with all the components in included with the alloy required. Okay, thank you. See you next time.